Good morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of GSA's Magical Moments. I'm Miss Linda. Thank you for joining us today. My helper, Vivi, is here. Um, so I know yesterday, if you were with us, I showed you some of the butterflies that hatched out of the chrysalis. Um, and we had two more that were still in their chrysalis. And um, so last night, one hatched out. And then this morning, one other one hatched out. So now all five caterpillars have went through their metamorphosis and they became their um, beautiful butterflies, right? So one just hatched a little bit ago. We missed it. I kept checking, but they're sneaky. Um, so he's still making drying his wings, but the other ones are... Making a lot of noises. Well, what's making the noises? Their wings. Their wings, because they're flapping all around. So let me show you them. Um... They're like... Oh, he's upside down. Hold on. He's stuck. Oh, there he goes. He was stuck upside down. All right. So can you see? He's flapping all around. And there's one here. See, your, their wings are opening. There, where's another one, baby? Right there. There's one down there. That one's flying all around. One... Oh, there's another one where? Right there? Yes. There's one. Oh my gosh, this is so weird. Right. There's a piece of the caterpillar. Yeah. The one that's, oh, you can't see him. I'm sorry. The one that is on the plastic lid still is the one that just hatched a little bit ago. So he's still getting his wings dry. This one's going a little crazy because he's upside down. Here, he's stuck upside down. It's okay, calm. Ooh. Calm down. There he goes, there he goes. So you can see they're getting ready, they're excited. We just had one on the banana, right? And the proboscis was on the banana, so we had the little bit of fruit back there. So we'll check them again before we're done our story. Um, look, he's really moving a lot. I hope you can see him. You can see this one open in his wings, look. Whoa. Yeah, and they're orange in the middle. They're really pretty. Okay, so we'll check them in a little bit, and I might have to do a special magical moment at the beginning of the week next week um, to release them. So we'll see. All right, so um, we've been talking about dinosaurs and learning all about dinosaurs, and today I'm going to read a story and share it with you. It's one of our favorite characters in our house, and his name is Skippy John Jones. So he, there's a couple books at Skippy John Jones, and we love him because he has a great imagination. He's always pretending. And um, so he's the main character in this story. And this story, because he's talking, is make-believe because cats can't really talk, right? And neither can dinosaurs. So it's a make-believe story. And Skippy John Jones is the main character. Baby's going to help us a little bit with some of the parts. And it was written by Judy Shackner. So this is a real fun story. We're just reading it to have fun. And I want you to think about being able to use your imagination to do anything that you want and pretend and have super fun. So this is called Skippy John Jones and the Big Bones. So look at that. What do you think? Make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen in this story? Just by looking at the front cover. I see some dinosaurs. I see Skippy John Jones with a bone in his mouth. So he's a cat, but he thinks that he's a chihuahua. Skippy John Jones and the Big Bones. Skippy John Jones was crazy about digging in Mrs. Dolly Doohiggy's garden. Because that's where Mrs. Dolly Doohiggy's dog Darwin buried all of his bones. And nobody messed with Darwin. You can see Darwin. He looks like a big dog sleeping back there. Two yards away, Mama Junebug Jones was hanging wash when her kitty boy blew through the sheets like a muddy wind. Hey, Pickle Pants, hollered Mama. Don't run with your mouth full. But Pickle Pants had only one thing on his mind. Here he goes. I bet a lot of you like to play outside like this, too. Are you going to help me? Dinosaurs! I'm going to be a famous paleontologist, whispered Skippy John Jones, arriving in his room. Paleontologist? 
is what we we talked about, right? Miss Miss Andrea mentioned it. And then we had a bin yesterday, and Vivi and Vincenzo were paleontologists, so that's what he wants to be. Then he popped a pickle in his puss and he slapped glue all over his newfound friend and stuck it into his model. And you are my Skipposaurus, he added out loud. Skipposaurus, declared Mama Junebug Jones, coming into the room. Those bones belong to Darwin, and you better take them back, for your prehistoric fossil is that snoozing doggy's snack. And do it now, ordered Mama, before he wakes up. So Mama got worried because he took Darwin's bones. And Darwin's gonna wake up. What do you think he's doing with these bones? But the kitty boy had no intention of returning Darwin's bones before he bounced on his big boy bed. First, he pounced and he wiggled. Then he bounced and he giggled. All the way up to the ceiling, he chanted, Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones and I bounce on my bed because I love to eat pickles that tickle my head. Then he flung himself over to the mirror for a head check. Holy hairballs, exclaimed Skippy John Jones, pulling out his tape measure. That's one huge cabeza. What's cabeza? Yeah, in Spanish, that's head. And look at what he sees in the mirror. He sees a chihuahua, but he's really a Siamese cat. Then using his very best Spanish accent, he added, my ears are too big for my head and my head won't fit into my bed. I know I'm not a Siamese cat. I am a chihuahua. And quicker than you can say chunky chihuahuas and cream, the kitty boy picked up his cape and pulled on his mask, and then he began to sing in a moist, soft voice. Moist, soft voice. Ready, baby? Are you going to help me clap? Oh, my name is Skipito Frisquito, and I hunt for dinosaur Rito with the gigantico ears that have been buried for years under layers of sedimentito. My helper. All that same time, the kitty boy's sister, Juju B, Jezebel, and Jilly Boo Jones were in Mr. Mrs. Doohiggy's yard watching Darwin sleep. Look at Darwin, he's drooling. This is fun, said Jezebel. Lots of fun, agreed Jilly Boo. The most is fun, added Juju B. But Skippy John wasn't thinking Darwin. He wasn't thinking dinosaurs, and he knew he was thinking dinosaurs, and he knew where to find them deep within his closet. So look into his closet. What's it look like in there? Like a jungle? Do you really think there's a jungle in his closet? No, that's his imagination. Whoa, said Skippito. It's a jungle in here. But as soon as he stepped over the threshold, his snifferito picked up the scent of his old amigos, Los Chimichangos. So do you know what amigos are? Can you say amigos? Yeah, they're friends. Friends. Stinkitos, called out Skippy John Jones. I smell you, but I don't see you. It is I, El Skippito Frisquito, the great sword fighter. Up here, Skippito, hollered the chihuahuas. We are toasting. We are toasting those marshmallows, Citos Prehistoricos. Not the prehistoric marshmallows, exclaimed Skippito. See, si, dude, replied the doggies, but they are as hard as rocas. So he's back in prehistoric time. And rocas, do you know what rocas are? They're rocks. So the marshmallows are really hard because they're old. That's because they are fossilitos said Skipito. Fasolito schmasolitos, declared Paquito Tito, the smallest of the smallest ones. We want to see Los Dinosaurios with our own ojos. Ojos are eyes. He said, pointing to his eyes. Por qué? asked Skipito. K is why. Because Bobocito, said Don Diego, the biggest of the small ones. We hear they are really, really big, dude. These, this news made the chihuahuas go insane oh, around the rim of the volcano. Singing, ready, baby? Are you gonna help me? Ding a ling, ding a long, ding a lito. You are such a silly scapito. You know what dogs think. If it's good, it must stink. Plus, it's great for the old snifferito. 
Yeah, we love this story. But right in the middle of their romp, Mount Itchy Gitchy Gumba blew its top. Oh, we talked about volcanoes this week. Look, it blew. But a bump on the rump would become the least of their worries because boom, 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 the earth began to tremble and shake. <gasps> what could that be? What could make the earth tremble and shake? <gasps> Terremoto, shouted Poquito Tito, panic stricken. It's not an earthquake, Keto, said Skippito, peeking through the bushes. It's T Mexito. Oh, what are they going to find? <gasps> Look at that, whoa, look at the dinosaurs. And he wasn't the only dinosaurio. There were big ones and small ones. Some were spiky and frilled with a look that could kill. Oh, sorry, feathered and bald ones. Some were spiky and frilled with a look that could kill. And they were all doing the very same thing. They were dancing. Could you imagine dinosaurs dancing? Look at them. This one has maracas, look. See the maracas? So let's see. Ay caramba, it's the rumba, cheered the chimichangos. And before Scapito could warn them, the rascalitos had shimmied and shook their way into the dance line. This is loco, wailed Scapito. You'll be crushed like Crispitos beneath the dino's toast toastitos. But the papitos did not hear. They were too busy singing. Itchy gitchy gumba, dinos do the rumba with jumbo jaws and giant claws, with horns and beaks and scaly peaks. Itchy gitchy gumba, chimichangos do the rumba with great big hearts and tiny parts, with knobby knees and lots of fleas. Itchy gitchy gumba. So they were dancing with the dinosaurs. Look how big the claws are. Whoa. But something had to be done to save them. And quicker than you can say, Pachycephalosaurus, Scapito let out a big Jurassic bark. Ruff! Uh oh, what's gonna happen? Holy halitosis, roared the T Mexito. I smell the pickle breath of a Skipposaurito. I smell his pickle breath. I am not a Skipposaurus, declared Scapito, whipping off his mask. I am a Chihuahua. Not the pillow-fighting, ankle-biting, pickle-dripping, dino-tripping Chihuahua they call El Scapito for Skito, the great sword fighter, shrieked T-Mexito. Oh, see, si, that is me, said Scapito with a bow. Then quicker than you can say, Don Diego's dominoes, every dinosaurio stopped, dropped, and rolled far away. Where's the fuego, dudes? asked Poquito Tito. There's no fire, said Scapito. They're just going extinct extincto. Hi, good morning, Melissa. Hi, Baron, good morning. I'm glad you love the book, me too. So extinct, remember? They went extinct, there wasn't any more. They don't live anymore. Muy bueno, Scapito. We love the Stinkito, agreed the Chihuahuas, and they tossed him into the air. Ready, baby? Diggory, you know, hold it down here. Diggory, digger, wait, diggory, diggeroo, diggerito. We learned something new from Scapito. He scares them to death, and that's with his old pickle breath, and that's how we get fossilitos. Thank you. Then all of a sudden, Boom, 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 boom. The earth began to tremble and shake. Every head popped up and sniffed. Dinosaurios, whispered the peri peritos. No, said Scapito, they are extincto. Si, sí, said the chihuahuas, es muy stinkito. But it wasn't the dinosaurios that they smelled. What did they smell, I wonder? It was Darwin and he was knock, knock, knocking on Skippy's closet door. And then click, the door opened and out tumbled the kitty boy on an avalanche of old dog bones. The next thing he knew, the kitty boy was waking up on the couch. What happened? asked Skippy John. Oh, don't you remember, Sugar Bee? asked Mama Junebug Jones. You decided to return Darwin's dog bones. All of them? asked Skippy John. That's right, Dumplin', said Mama proudly. Good morning, Miss Erica. 
That very same night, the kitty boy found Mr. Perfect still sitting on the corner, all covered in bones. My Skipposaurus, he whispered, and then he dragged the cat over to his big boy bed for a good night bounce. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones, and I'm not a dog fighter, but I still have some bones because I'm the decider. And then he decided to go to sleep. The end. So that's one of our favorite books and one of our favorite characters because he has such a great imagination and he's silly and he's always getting into something. So we love following his stories. So I hope you enjoyed the book. And this one is actually a book on CD. So it's really, it's fun when you hear the author read it. She reads it. Um, so that was our story for today. I'm going to show you the butterflies one more time. And we're going to release them sometime next week. So here they are. All five of them finally hatched. If you weren't with us at the beginning, all five of them hatched. The last one hatched this morning and one hatched overnight. And here they are. Here's a bunch of them right here. Baby, can you help me see them? Oh, of course, they're all right behind the green thing. Okay. Yeah, here's one flapping so his wings. So one there. See, he's spreading his wings out. Oh my gosh, there's three in the same. I know. There's maybe their friend. Their friends. Can you see the orange? Uh, it's so hard on here. Oh, the one's not the drying orange. its wing anymore. So we have five butterflies. They're kind of calm right now. We have some fruit in there and we are going to release them next week. So it's hard to see the color, but there he is flapping his wings. He's saying, bye everyone. Have a great day. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us. If you missed any of our magical moments, please check out our YouTube channel. They are all on there and they're very helpful. Um, for me personally, I know I keep saying that um, for Vincenzo to watch and Vivi um, And I hope you enjoy your day. Have a great day. We'll see you next week sometime. Bye Bye, Bye.